So my name is Helen Mae Samira and we're at um, the National Eye Institute which is part of the National Institute of Health and we're sitting in my lab. So I work on a genetic disease, I primarily focus on a disease called bardet beetle syndrome but it's part of an umbrella run diseases that are all called ciliopathies. When part of the cell called the cilium isn't working anymore you can get loads of different symptoms, blindness, obesity, get kidney disease. I never really know what to say when, I, when people ask me where I'm from because I was born in the UK but we lived in lots of different countries growing up. I loved science. I always I did physics and maths and I just really I thought biology was really cool. And so I went to the University of Bath and studied biochemistry. And I just really loved understanding how the cell works and especially with biochemistry it's more it's not just pure chemistry but it's not pure biology it's kind of really understanding about all the different mechanisms and the enzymes and the molecules in the cell but I really wanted to relate that to a disease and to human disease and I was very 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 lucky because I fell into a great lab with a really really great supervisor and they were all studying this disease that I was mentioning Bardet Beetle syndrome so here you can see like a sheet of cells and this is this for example is one cell and this is this hair sticking out and that's called a cilium and it's kind of like the antenna of a cell so this cilium seems to be important for many many different aspects in the cell and because most cells in the body have one of these if the cilium doesn't work anymore then you're going to have problems but there's a cell type in the eye called the photoreceptor and if the cilium and the photoreceptor doesn't work, these cells die. And that's why I thought it was very important to come and study this disease in, at the National Eye Institute. I grow cells, um, I look at isolate proteins and look at how the different proteins interact with each other. And we have various different ways that we can do this. And so I can remove the liquid. You have to change tips each time so that you have a clean tip for each chamber. And then you do the same for the next one. So, three hours. I look at cells on a dish and we can stain them with different markers to actually look at the cilium and we can manipulate those cells to see if the cilia change. So that was a, a fibroblast cell, so it was a skin cell um, that we stained with these two markers that would label the ciliary axoneme and the ciliary membrane. You have to have perseverance and you have to know that you know, sometimes it is going to take 20 times to do something and that there are always variables but if you can, you know, on the 20th time, you really have that eureka moment and you'll be jumping up and down in front of your western blot machine because you've finally seen a band that you've never seen before. But also you have to be very humble and realise that not all your theories are going to be right. It's more me like buses, you know, you wait for hours for one to come along and three come along at once. So. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually we do want to look at treatment options to see if we can maybe replace what is missing in the patient cells. Right now we are moving forward, we've got some great candidates, we've got some options that we're working on and we are starting to see some improvement. The other thing to remember is 10 years ago we didn't know what this was, we didn't know what genes and what molecules were involved, we knew nothing. At least now we kind of have we have our building blocks and now we're starting to put them together to figure out how they work. No one ever really trained you in the communication and you know, writing PowerPoint presentations or explaining your work to other people. That will help you more than anything else. So when we have to make figures, we physically are using Photoshop to make your panels of taking your beautiful pictures and make, turning them into a story that you can you know, explain the work that you've done. Oh yeah, I like that picture. On a, on a daily basis we have group meetings and lab meetings to discuss you know, projects and where they're going. These are my, my cells and I was going to stain them with this one with PCM1 and gamma tubulin and that one with LAMP1 and pericentrin. Do you think that's a good idea? Yes. Yeah? Did you try it before? Um, use 1 to 1K. 1 to 1K? Okay. It really, it really is a privilege to work in science because 
not many people get to do it. It is tough. If you're interested in something, in be it engineering or physics or maths, just do it because it's cool. And if you can follow that grill, it won't feel like it's a job. And if you get the opportunity to do it, you won't be disappointed. Thank you.